We're continuing our studies in Chapter 12 on Metabolism and Bioenergetics. In this lesson, we'll look at redox reactions and carriers. In the catabolism of amino acids, monosaccharides, and fatty acids, they all involve oxidizing carbon. Remember, these are primarily carbon-containing compounds. When we oxidize carbon, we replace a CH bond with a CO bond. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, on the left we have the most reduced form of carbon, methane, all CH bonds. The bond between carbon and hydrogen and methane, the electrons are shared fairly equally. However, we might imagine the electrons being pulled more towards the carbon atom. In the most oxidized form of carbon, CO2, on the right, we have electron withdrawing oxygen atoms and they're tugging the electrons in their direction. So the electrons are being removed from carbon and that makes it an oxidation. In other words, it's lost electron density. So catabolic pathways tend to be oxidative and by contrast, anabolic pathways tend to be reductive. In other words, they involve the reducing of carbon. Both fatty acids and sugars can be oxidized. Fatty acids contain a number of methylene groups and those can certainly go undergo oxidation. In carbohydrates we have both CH and COH bonds, uh, multiple of, of those types of bonds and each of those can also undergo oxidation. In oxidation, we're extracting electrons, and those electrons may be passed as a hydrogen atom, that is, as a proton and an electron, or as a hydride ion, a proton and two electrons. Remember the definitions for oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. When we oxidize these compounds in catabolism or reduce them in anabolism, those electrons are moved to temporary carriers before moving to their final location. And these temporary carriers are cofactors. So they are passed to these metabolites, enzyme cofactors such as NAD or NADP+. On the left we have NAD+, there's an extra phosphorus atom if it's NADP+. This is the oxidized form, you'll notice the positive charge here. It can collect a hydride ion, which again is a proton and two electrons. And that forms NADH or NADPH as illustrated here. So again on the left we have the oxidized form, on the right the reduced form. We also have another carrier, ubiquinone, and we'll see this more particularly when we get to chapter 15. This carrier is unique in that it can carry either one or two electrons, and it does so in a sequential fashion. So here's the ubiquinone molecule. It can pick up a hydrogen atom that is a proton and an electron and form a semiquinone. It's picked up only one electron at this point. Then it can pick up another proton and electron to be the fully reduced form, and that's ubiquinol. These cofactors can be recycled. In other words, if one is reduced, it can be reoxidized, or vice versa, and this is important for their function. These cofactors are recycled through oxidative phosphorylation, and we're going to look at that more particularly in Chapter 15. In our next video lesson, we want to see how vitamins participate in metabolism and what are the general metabolic steps in catabolism.